But you read, with the first time you read a script, that's the closest as a director you ever are to this moment. Mm. You are actually weirdly moving away from this moment, which is an innocence watching a film or is it just breaks over you. Maybe some of them know the trailer, but I'm a believer in amnesia anyway. When people sit down in a good space like that is, they forget the trailer. You know, they're ready for whatever it was attracted them yeah. in the trailer that brought them here or whatever reason they are here. And so you have, so that first moment you read the script, when I remember reading it, you try in some part of your brain or heart or soul or whatever it is, you try and make sure that the final delivered piece, which is the opposite of innocence, which has been through so many sins and so much, you know, so many adventures and nightmares on the way there, is as close as possible to that original freshness you felt when you first read the story. Because that's what one of your responsibilities is, is to try and use all the technical brilliance of people towards delivering something that doesn't look technical, that looks like a story, you know, just told to you. And then you can rave about the technicalities later if you want to, or come back and see it, and kind of, it depends on what you're interested in, what bit of it you're interested in. But the, the essence of a communal experience is you deliver the freshness of a story to them. Um, and I, the first time I read it, I knew I was going to make the film. It was just felt a very simple, extraordinary, wonderful idea that kind of just knocked you off your equilibrium a little bit, but in a delicious and funny and heart, heartwarming and moving way. It was interesting because you read the script and it is delightful because obviously you've got all these great gags about the Beatles songs and everything. You think, what's not to like about 15, 17 Beatles songs used in this jokey or touching way or whatever you think oh that'll be great but of course it isn't the Beatles songs it's their songs but it's not their version because they disappeared and the the premise of the film is obviously he has to recover them rebirth them really from his memory if he can remember all the lyrics some of which he can't understandably um, but the downside of that is actually once you start auditioning people you realize oh my god would I listen to this guy who's come in for more than one or two songs, and a lot of them, who were very good, you've got to say, you think, no, that's, it's a karaoke moment, and it'll last for yeah. five minutes of pleasure like karaoke does, you know, and there's a few highlights, yeah. but after a while, you think, are you gonna seriously sit in a cinema and watch some people do karaoke versions of the Beatles songs? <laughs> so you have to find some, and this guy came in, Himesh Patel, and it was like, it was something Sheeran said about, we didn't say it about him, because I, I wouldn't presume to, I don't know enough about music, really, but, Sheeran said when he heard him play, he said he's got a soul. It's very simple. You can't put your finger on it, but that's soul. He has a, his touch on the songs is soulful. And I don't quite know what produces that. Some of those songs he did know, because he's 27, so he wasn't there. He wasn't around in the heyday. Um, some of the songs he knew, some of them he didn't know. He had to kind of be introduced to them. But he seems to have a connection with the songs that we never found in anyone else. A little bit of magic, maybe. Yeah, yeah. and he was... As soon as he walked in and started playing, he played yesterday and USSR, so one mellow, one upbeat, and you just thought, it's him, let's cast him, yeah. you know? Amazing. And so, with regard to uh, your relationship and the, the films, you, the movies you guys have worked on together, we were trying to work out how many it's been, so it's been a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, yeah. Too many. <laughs> no. Too many. I think everybody agrees that now. It's like... How, I mean, without going long, long-winded, but you know, with, with the first time you guys worked on something, was that a bit of divine intervention, or, or, or had you planned it, had you heard of Glenn's work, or did you just meet one day, and how did that? Well, I got a call, and I was working down in, I was looking at Shepparton, actually, on a film called, I think it's called Plunkett and McLean, which is Ridley oh, Scott, yeah. really Scott's son, was, direct, was directing it. And I had this call and to come up to town to meet Danny East for the beach, you know. And I went, wow, yeah, you know, and of course, I thought, this is cool, because it just came out of the blue to me, you know, and um, I, uh, and I can remember, because I, I got a, the Virgin Bikes that just came in, right? So I got a Virgin motorbike. I said, I've got Did to you? go. Yeah, no, because I, cause I, so I got this Virgin motorbike, so I didn't miss it, you know, I thought I'm going to get in traffic. I got, you know. Wow. And, uh, so I got on this bike and broke whizzed me up to there, and, then, and there was Danny and Andrew McDonald there sitting on me. I forgot, it was in, but it's up, up when you, you think it, is it building up there. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, I'll never forget it. So I walked in, we had a chat and everything, and it, it was lovely, and it was lovely, you know, they said nice things. Yeah. And you know, you know, was it? And uh, 
the, the best part, well, actually, this is Danny all over, really. So we get, it gets up, you're just sitting there, you think, well, this is, you know, cause I don't like doing interviews. For, I, I actually hate being interviewed for work. <laughs> I, you know, I never apply, I've never applied for a job anyway. So, like, it's just, that's not really, you know, I just not that type, you know. Mm. So, I can remember when we had this video, the film, it sounded really exciting, you know, and, and it was, and it's a great film, Leonardo DiCaprio, and I thought, oh, this is brilliant, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I got up, no kidding, we went, I went to the door to go up, and Danny painted me and said, he goes, I'll see you January. And that was, that, that's what he said, that, that's how he did it, and that thought, I like it, it's cool, but it was really nice, and I was like, so, I got, I went back downstairs, really excited. Jump back on the bike, you know. I was like, I was like cloud nine running, you know, getting back on that bike. Stuff. But no one knows those stories are there, that behind the no, scenes. Yeah. I'd got this bike, and I got back on the bike, and I went back to Shepparton to carry on working. <laughs> like uh, like, like you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so with sound design, obviously you must be obviously a very big music fan. Uh, I know how important. I think Glenn has said to me before that you've said maybe seventy five percent of the movie, as often other people have adhered to, is sound. Because you take sound out of something, uh, and that that says a lot coming from somebody who makes a great picture as well. So the relationship between oh, it is it, it, it is bizarre the the bias towards the visual or the cinema cinematographic, you know the kind of uh, which is understandable because it's kind of obviously something that you can quantify in a magazine yeah. or a, you know you can have pictures of you know certain looks and things like that, and it is wonderful. I'm not denigrating that side of it but I think when you when you work inside the business you realize if the sound is poor you're lost it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks it doesn't matter how good the performance is if the sound is poor they will disconnect so it's your actual it's your umbilical cord and it, but it's an invisible one obviously it doesn't it, you can't feature a bit of it in a magazine and go there look at that yeah. you know you can't put your it, and, and of course, that's its magic, of course, and that's its power, because it is working on you in a way that you don't know. And it can be almost maliciously used to manipulate you in a terrible saccharine film that there's all these secret yeah. things being made to make you feel. But of course, its power, in, when it's used tr truly and properly, is an immense part of the impact of cinema. You know, the, um, and, and it's one of the things that, when we started off, we... We talked a bit about, um, and I have to give credit to this to Andrew McDonald, the original producer that I worked with. A long time standing relationship you got there. Yeah, with him, and he he was convinced that the reason that American, so this is back in the mid '90s, and he was convinced that the reason that you know it's a constant question: why do American movies seem to work better than ours? Why are they bigger and better than ours? And he was convinced at the time that it was because they ring fenced money for sound. Because one of the problems for sound is that you're last, you know, and the cue to gobble up the money, the funding for the film, is obviously indulged by the actors, the cinematographers, everybody's kind of grabbing an extra bit of it. And every bit of overtime you do, unless you ring fence the money for sound, every bit of overtime you do, every bit of indulgence you do, every bit of extra pop, let's have two of them, eats into what you're going to do when you try and finish the film, really. And, and so he ring-fenced, he established this idea that we would ring-fence the money for the sound to make sure that you had enough time to deliver. And we benefit, although we made very small films before I met Glenn, the, the uh, Shallow Grave and Trainspotting were both budgets of like a million pounds and two million pounds. They, were, they, had, they had a bit of effort put into the sound. And you learn if you do that, you see the impact of sound and the value of it really on an audience, just the power of it as well, it's magical really. And because people can't pin it down and take photographs of it, it retains that power. And I particularly have used it with music because that's my own you know, appetite is for pop music really. I've always loved it in films because you kind of gonna, gonna get a double layer of impact, I think, using it. People's memories of the songs, if they have a, people's association with the songs, and then this new association in the, in the new material of the film. I think that's, that's really well explained. Thank you, Vinan. I think what's interesting about a lot of your work is the way that you can, I don't know if, it's, if this is a real phrase, but you seem to be able to take somebody full circle, which I think is a very smart and cool thing to be able to do. So, for example, something like Slumdog, which is obviously one of the feel-good, most fantastic films, but it also touches on some of the darkest 
things that could possibly occur in social life. You know, I think that's, yeah. that that requires um, something pretty smart and pretty skilled to actually be able to do that in, in film. And within the sound of that, I think we discussed then that, like the part where you know it's immersed in, I think it's water, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and just um, the, the, trains, yeah, the, the moment the, where right. you just decided from a sound design point of view yeah. that I'm going to do that, and it's going to take the audience away from the film for a bit, and that's they're going to maybe feel a little breathless and then suddenly bang you back again and those kind of bits I think where the meticulousness of, of, of certain parts of sound design can completely change the way a film clicks. Does that make sense? What I'm trying oh, to yeah. say? Yeah. There's, there's that scene there which I thought was one of my favourite scenes. There's a few of them that, that I, I can watch and go from the journey we went from A to B to C to and what we came out with I think it was like heart rending and there's another scene in that yeah. film where the little girls coming in the rain and she's got there's like the, the hand of footsteps in there yeah. and she's got the little you know she's going to the train carriage yeah. That, oh yeah that's that right yeah. but it was but we started off and it's raining it wasn't but it became something of beauty yeah Be, in, and because the sound took it there yes. more and they looked beautiful anyway but when you just put it on if you, if you had what you saw but we didn't there was this tiny little pads that became bigger than, than the rain which then connected to the little the girl and the boy sitting in there which focused on them more of the A, the weight of her, the size of her. Mm. And you do that by just a simple thing. Mm. You remember that, it was that beautiful. So you take those moments, and then, that's why, like you say, people don't know that. They feel it, but they're not sure. They can still see it looks beautiful, the mm. rain and the lights, and Anthony's cinematography everywhere. And they say, oh, it's a beautiful scene, but they don't know why. But they, they shouldn't really know why. Mm. Um, Wonderful poignancy, you can yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I think, you know, like, it's not many people that as brave as Danny when, when we work because mm. people says to me and Lisa oh my god I was like up to this point and then down again and then I you know if I say oh, we're going to do that and we start to do it and they go oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're really going to go that loud or are you going to go that quiet yeah. but well, those dynamics no the, the, you know, mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that is what that is the same thing as what life is you, you could be running the morning and you get in your seat something go oh and you go down again yeah. So it's, you're only replicating, and that's what I'm saying. If you can replicate the feelings, if you can get that moment of the of what I feel. I mean, I like um, when I'm scared. I can mean, I always go back to stupid things. When I was on, a, 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 this is stupid. Like <laughs> I was on, a, a, that, the, with, like with 28 days. When I was on, I've been chased on my moped, and I've gone to this place and went and green right. <laughs> and I got, and they all of a sudden these people took umbrage to me because I wasn't from that village. So like. <laughs> They and like they chased me and my fear and everything. And I got my bike and I hid it. And I've chucked it in this head and I hid it in this corner. And they come in. And my whole perception of everything had turned into different. Like, I could hear that. Like, this, and I think of my breathing, my tooth, everything was like that, you know. And, uh, it's, and it made me feel really, really uncomfortable. So you try and, when, you get, when I get to these situations like that, you feel that, right? And you think, what makes me feel, because I'm sure. Because we're human, we all have those sort of emotions in us. Yeah. And if you can trigger it with sound, you know, that's a really powerful thing. You know, if someone comes in and their voice is slightly different that day, you can go, oh. you know what I mean? Mm. You just, it makes you, it, it turns, you, you know, because I mean, I'm a very sensitive person anyway, so I'm probably more sensitive to these situations, but sound has always been that. And I've, every part of it, happy, giving and everything, I always try and put myself, I mean, I can always remember those moments where the sound was different to me at any given point, you know, walking down, you know, and that's, I, it may sound stupid. see it in you, stupid. you see the emotion in you. Yeah, it? but it, it, that, is that, is that, that yeah. I look at everything like that, you yeah. know, what makes you feel, and if it makes the heart go, or yeah. there's a sequence in this, you know, you know you've got it right when you when you feel something. It's yeah. not only hearing it, it's like, I always say it sounds about the feeling of what you're feeling, not just about what you're hearing, because it, it has an emotional concept within you, and if you can hit that, and you and you don't know why you hit it, yeah. but I know that we've gradually over the years had this technique that we would, um, I mean, if you see Daniel Theory, he's, he's involved in you know, like, it's, it's, it's amazing, because you know, he's fully focused on it. Yes, yeah. But we normally go to a point, especially films like, say, I know, Slum Lord 28 or, or even 127, yeah. which is hugely dynamic films within themselves, aren't they? Mm. You know, they're, 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 the peaks and the troughs are massive. Oh, yeah. But... I know some people ask me, say, well, how did you do that? And you go, well, basically, we went to the point where we broke it, and we knew we broke it, so we came back a bit. And Because you don't know. I don't think you do know exactly. There's not any hard and fast rules, really, 
Well, I don't think there are, apart from, you know, you can't distort it. Oh, you can, because we did distort it in Sunshine, which is actually one of my favourite Sony films we've ever done, yeah. it, you know, to this day. Yeah. That I, I, you know, the more I get asked about that film, like, oh, that's just amazing. So but, although there's no, although there's no written rules, there was a kind of unwritten formula between the two of you when it comes to putting that sound onto you know, the vision, I guess, you're visualising half of this, Glenn's visualising half of this, there's something that just works between the two of you. Well, you, 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 one of the kind of principles that I have is that you, you want your heads of department, which is your key people really that you're working with, to be like what I call, not insultingly, uh, mini directors. I kind of expect them to direct their take on the film and that's rather than it feeling like that I'm going to dictate because obviously they're specialists in their areas anyway but it's not just the technical speciality they have you know the people that you end up selecting to work with are artists really because you kind of that's the way you're inclined and um, and you want their um, response to the subject matter to the rushes to the uh, script to the idea of the story you want that really to be presented to you and that's what you're expecting from people so Yes, you are looking for that magic that a, a, a real collaborator will give you. And the worst thing you can do is not that you could with somebody like Glenn, but it can happen, I suppose, is, you in, is intimidate people out of wanting to produce their work for you. And they produce their work for you and then you can steal it, <laughs> which is the truth <laughs> of it. Because you get all the credit anyway, so why not just steal it? Um, <laughs> And, 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 and that's the way to do it, really. And the, that's one of the dangers with success is that you, it, you can intimidate people because they think you know more. Because of the illusion the press creates of, of that credit, that people assume you know more than you do, really. And um, it's such a relief that your mini-directors, your mini-me's, you know, that they come up with these wonderful ideas which you know you're going to benefit from. Yeah, that's, <clears> lovely. that's really well said, actually. And, and it, gives you the, it gives everyone in that position you say, a freedom to know they're not going to have their head shot off if they've done something stupid, you know, like, which we all do sometimes, <laughs> you know, like, oh, we go too far or whatever, because, yeah. uh, I mean, I, that's, I, can't, I think, I, I, I remember that, we did 127 hours, and it, it was great, but there was one moment when the, he's going to cut his arm, and we go inside, and, the, and we have the blood, and, and I knew it straight away, we'd over-designed it, you know what I mean, it was like, because the film is it's supposed to be you know, it's, it's real, isn't it? It's a real moment. Mm. And <laughs> we'd gone in and we'd gone in the bud and we'd, we'd put mics in ears and done all that stuff, stuff like we just trying to get that pumping thing in there. And it, as an individual thing, it sounded great, right? And I remember Danny go, that's great, but perhaps not for this film. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's right. But, but all we did, to be honest, we, yeah. all we did, we just took a tiny layer out because yeah. I could see it. You know, when you realise you've got it out there, you go, we've gone too far. You know? <laughs> yeah. This is the guy here, and we're making it more about. Yeah. But rather like, go too far and pull it back than Making never it get more there. about the you know? visuals, yeah. uh, the visuals, and what we can do with it. When the essence of that point, when it was all going through, that was him and his essence of survival and his family, where he was going to get to, and the, what he wanted to do. Yeah. And at that point, anything that you want to obviously create that shit, whatever, but you don't want to, you know, it's obviously when he's put it out of oh my God, you're, you've gone the other side of it. Now you're turning into sort of like a, uh, something that is not right for the moment, because the moment is, is, is a big moment mm. in the true story. Mm. But that's, uh, you know, because you could say, well, you can always get carried away, but it's knowing that you've been carried away as well. Mm. And, I like that. And, you know, I like that. And you can do it in everything. You can do it. I'm sure you can do it. You can do it in grain. You can do it in editing. You can do it in all forms of mm. filmmaking. And I think you all, the, the older, you, the more fame, the more you get better at your job, the more you understand what you're doing. You, you're not. Un, you, the more you, you understand that you're not making the film for yourself for the sound, but you're making the film. Yeah. And I realised that in my career, the realisation when I could step back, when I started, I wish you saw like something else and said, and I decided, but yeah, I sit more. You go to the mill and you're watching the film at that point because all the work's all that's done. Now you want to be watching the story and, and trying to figure out what's right mm. at that time. It doesn't mean sound is not about you know you could have worked for, oh, a month, an amazing bit, and then the composer's done it or whoever. And we, the music and the films are always sublime because that's not by chance either. That 
that one note or that one piece of music do you know that does more for the moment than what we've done so I, I, I think that's when you become that's when I found I became better at even my just my own personal film better at what I did mm. when when it when, I, when it was just you just literally the film you really really look at it because when you're a young buck you you know I think we are you think, oh what day is that and the other and and it is sometimes you just got to, and, and and that's what, doing that you recognise you just want the best for the character this or that or the mm. eye line and that you notice all these parts. And if that glitz there, or what's that there? You don't need that sound there. You don't need this here mm. there because anything that would distract from what is the most important bit of you watching that film at any time, what you're trying to tell. So you want that moment to be the moment, whatever it is. If it's the picture, if it's the sound, or what you know, it can be both. But that's I think is 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 the um, the best thing you can do mm. for, in any department. No, I think it makes sense. You know, because you, I mean, it, you know, because if you've got some. If you, Yes, and that is that's a, um, over my forty-four years of doing this. <laughs> but, it comes okay. down, it? but but it's, it's it's true though because you you, you know because I get excited. You can tell, like today, I get yeah. there, and I still get excited about at the end of a film when everyone's gone because I'm the last one that checks it, looks it, and I can remember being in the room and I look at it last time and I looked from the journey from the beginning from when we get a cutting copy yeah. to the end, and even to this day, sometimes I go, how. You know, like you, so I think you touched it when you introduced it. That you see this film, and all of a sudden it is there, and it's like, it's just. The journey must be insane. Like, you feel like, like you're there, yeah. you got like you're there, yeah. Yeah. and um, that's when you feel proud. And I still feel, I still feel proud, and I feel that moment, well, you know, that you know, at the end yeah. of every film, if, it, if if it's if it's good, or you know, mm. and if it's good, or if we think we've, we've um, all filled up a potential, because it takes everybody, because that. You know, they yeah. are the sum of all the parts, yeah. and if some parts not working, it's very difficult sometimes, mm. isn't it? You know, and it's recognizing. I mean, Danny, as the director, he, he recognizes it and makes sure it's fixed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> with, the, uh, uh, with the nods, to, I mean, obviously, this is a site because obviously we're working with Richard on this, yes, which is a, a first, I understand. I yes, it is. Yes. Too early. Um, that's an interesting. I mean, he seems a, we met very briefly early. Seems a lovely man, obviously a legend in his field. Has that been an interesting dynamic? Yes, it is. It's very. Um, it's nice to do. Obviously, Richard spent his whole career dedicated to a, a kind of romance and comedy, really. And so he's in a kind of. I tend to jump around and try and ch change the genre that you that you work in, really, and, and present as many challenges to yourself as as you can. Whereas Richard's very much honed his talents, perf trying to perfect this um, this dedication to ro that. that this corridor he's in of romance and comedy. So to drop into that corridor with him is fascinating, really. Certainly in terms of this, it creates probably more than any film, I think, is that the clarity of dialogue has to be absolutely yeah. pucker because yeah. you, because what you're doing is obviously you are going from, there's some lovely, lovely gags, but obviously you can ruin gags if you can't hear them. Yeah. Again, it's the, it's the importance of sound it's that thing without sound, there is no light. If you can't hear the setup of a yeah. gag, you'll just be lost.